that we may be able to walk and talk and do things that are pleasing in your sight, God. We pray for those, God, who have called into this ministry and request prayer, whatever the situation may be. Remember them in a special way. God, remember those who are among this fellowship. We pray that you would touch those who are home ill, Lord, those who are going through bereavement, that you would be a comforter right now in the name of Jesus. And, oh, God, bless this service on this morning. Bless our pastor, God, as he brings forth the word of God. Lord, everything that is done, Lord, we pray that you would give the glory, God, that you would be edified, and you would be glorified in the name of Jesus, we pray. Hear our prayer and bring us our peace, and we shall forever praise your name. This is our prayer, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for the Let's give God praise in the building. How many of you to worship the Lord on this morning? Come on, let's give God some worship because the Lord is good. The Lord has brought us here. He woke us up this morning and we started on our way. If you don't mind, let's worship the Lord. We're going to give God some worship here in the building. Those who are listening live.
We brought some Christian ingredients from the Grand River Church here at 316 South Adele, here in the city of Deland, Florida, 32720. The number here to the sanctuary is 386 734 2001. We hear the leadership of our pastor, Bishop James Darby, along with his first lady, Mother Frances Darby. We ask you at this time to, if you were viewing us through our Facebook page, make sure that you like and share our Facebook page. If you're doing a watch party, please make sure that you visit our Facebook page. There we ask you to like and share with others what the Lord is doing here at 316 South Adele. If you would like to join us in the ministry of giving, you may do so by the way of our cash app. The tag is Money Sign the Land Refuge. Again, that's Money Sign the Land Refuge. Either you can use PayPal as well, you can do that with our email address, and that's the Land Refuge 386 at gmail.com. Again, that's the Land Refuge 386 at gmail.com. If you're listening to us and you didn't have the opportunity to write that down, we will also have a pen in our view room that you on the Facebook page as well as where you may go in and share in the giving ministry. We also like to tell you that the prayer lines are open at this time. If you have a prayer request, a need, whatever it is, you can do so by calling 386-734-2001. That's here uh, at the sanctuary. Bishop Darby will share his personal contact information with you, but at this time we want to turn it over to our First Lady, Mother Francis Darby. Praise the Lord, everyone.
to Guyana, or Suriname, South America, or Kenya, East Africa, or India, you might place on your memo those countries. But if you want to send specifically for any area, and if foreign field, just place on the check on the order for foreign ministry. God bless you, those of you that are part of this church, some of you we have not seen you for quite a while, but some of you quarantined, uh, some quarantined themselves in spite of uh, whether they have been uh, affected by the COVID or not. It's simply free to come to church because we limited our attendance here. But the church has to go on. So it's imperative to those of you that are part of this church to make sure you send your gifts to support your church. And when you do come back, things will be going on as usual. Now you may not have your gifts here to the church by way of those people locally, by way of the, uh, the announcement that Sir shared with you earlier. All right, we thank you again for those of you that have been sitting in support of the ministry here and for the foreign ministry especially as well. And the 78th Psalm, the two verses that I want to place emphasis on, two verses. In the 78th Psalm, verse 41 and verse 42. For many years, over 50 years, I've shared this particular scripture across this nation and probably across seas as well. It is a reminder of the people of God, the things that God has provided and we have access to. It marks extreme importance in our hearts and the minds of the people of God to be cognizant of this fact. Verse 41 Psalm 78. Yea, they turned it back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Verse 42. They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. Two verses, Psalm 78. And as a substitute of this text, I've chosen three simple words, and they are don't limit God. Don't limit God. God has the ability to be everywhere at one time. That simply means that he is omnipresent. He knows all things. That simply means that he's omniscient. He knows everything. And he has the power to do anything and everything. That simply means he's, a, he's omnipotent. There aren't anything that he cannot do because he has this ability to do anything that we can think or we can imagine. Now those of you that listen to me, a few of you that are here, and those of you that are listening perhaps several countries around the globe, and those of you that are in the continental United States, 
of a miracle. As I said earlier, I'm not trying to entertain you because there are so many things that God has provided for your needs and even for some of your wants. And you have the ability to claim the things that God has provided for you. But so many times we fail to recognize the abilities that God has. And sometimes we fail to understand or to recognize that God is concerned about every creature that he made. He has made accessible the sunshine, the rain. He put food on tables across the nation. He has come through for us, but others say no. He said yes. When the devil ordered things on our lives to render us bad experiences, he brought a special delivery to our houses. And the delivery was a bad, it was very bad. But God cancels every adverse thing that the enemy brings to our lives. But we've got to come to the place where we understand that God has made these provisions for us. And we must refuse to live below our privilege. So many people are living below their privilege. God has opened doors. And all we simply have to do is walk into the door that God has made for us. But then we sit back and said, I can't get up. I can't walk through the door. I remember some time ago, I came to town here. And there's a young man that was related to one of the, those that were part of the ministry. He'd gone to Vietnam, had been on the battlefields, in the jungles of Vietnam, and somehow he was affected by the experience that he encountered while he was engaged in warfare. Came and built him a house, and after building the house, he built, went up under the house, and dug the hole out and refused to live in his house. He chose to live under the house. There's so many people that are living beneath their privilege because they have placed limitations on God. The same holds true for the text today. It has reference to the people of God God has chosen people, the household of Israel. They were slavery in Egypt. God sent an ambassador by the name of Moses to go to them to bring them out of slavery. God had promised their forefathers. I'm going to bless you with a land that's flourishing, land of prosperity, land that's already established. The riches in the agriculture, in agriculture, fruit below, the animals there. 
that are producing milk. Bees are in it making honey. I'm going to bless you with that land. And you must understand if God promises something, God will bring it to pass. He doesn't have the ability to lie. He cannot lie. His nature does not allow him to lie. If God said it, it shall come to pass. Amen. These people that God brought out of Egypt, He opened up a sea for them. The exact number is not known. I've heard two different numbers relevant to the number of those who came out of Egypt. Stayed two million or so. But God opened up the Red Sea for them and allowed them to go across on right ground. When they reached the other side, they were thirsty. Salt water, the water was bitter. God turned the water into sweet water. But less than three months time, of the land of Egypt, they began to come and to complain. Just a few weeks earlier, he opened up the sea for them. <clears throat> and a month or so later, they complained, we don't have food to eat. Complain to the man of God. And they asked this question, can God provide a table in the wilderness? Can God feed us? Now yet God had just a few weeks earlier opened up the Red Sea for them. And then they asked the question, can God provide a table of furniture, a table in the wilderness? They put a limit on God in spite of what God had done already. Then later on, after God sent bread from heaven, sent in multitudes of quails to satisfy the hunger, they didn't ask you. He turned around and said to this, complain to the man of God. Had God provide a rock, and from that rock, rivers of waters came out of that rock to feed those hundreds of thousands of Jews. They were drinking water like my God was the last drink. But yet, they tempted God. Can God, even the listening to me, don't ask the question, can God? But make the statement, God can. Wherever you are, don't ask. But make the statement God can. Yes. Don't put the limit on him. Now, they had experienced God as no one else had ever experienced him. God had done for them that he had never done for anyone else before. So you listen to me now. God has done things for you 
And yet, you still have a limit on him. The Bible said he turned back the tent of God and lived in the home of one of Israel. And they remember not. That's a key word. You want to keep in your mind the things that God has done for you. And it will help you to elevate your faith to another level. To let you know if it did it once. Oh, God, he will do it again. He had given them one miracle and another miracle and another miracle. And still they complain. I'm saying to you that are listening to me, in spite of how bad your life may be, and how difficult all of your circumstances are, God has made himself a miracle to reach and to meet every need that you have. Because he is God. He is almighty. He has never failed. Failure is not a part of his character. He has stability. Those of you that are listening to me, because of the pandemic, that have reached every country on the face of the globe. Thousands, millions have died, but God is still the God. Yes. Even those that are preaching and teaching healing have submitted to the COVID pandemic. What I mean by that is, I'm not encouraging them to wear masks, not to social distance, but I'm encouraging you to believe that God can heal. There are those that have contracted the condition, but God is still God. Yes. He's still a miracle worker. Amen. He can, he will. And if you believe him, he shall bring it to pass. Amen. Take the limit off of God. Yeah. Stop doubting him. The demons of doubt want to discourage you. There's still problems even before the pandemic set. There have been major problems around the world. There have been demons trying to destroy. The Bible said the thief comes up from the hills to steal and to destroy. This has just been another move of the devil to bring misery on the lives of the creations of God. No matter who you are, where you are, color of your skin, your status on the social stratification list, no matter who you are, God loves you. You may be a drunkard, may be a thief, may live in all kinds of lives, but I thank God he does not have any respect of person. He still loves you. Yes. As I stand here today, if it had not been for the grace of God, and some of you that are listening to me, you can say in your heart, if it had not been for the grace of God, you would not be where you are now. But thank God for his grace. Amen. Thank God for his mercy. Yes. Don't listen to the demons of doubt. Trying to set discouragement in your heart, in your eyes. Telling you that God doesn't care or God can't. Don't listen. Bringing fear into your lives. And the Bible declared that fear is torment. Once fear sets in, it has the ability to bring doubt into your hearts. But don't ask the question, can God? See, God can. Make that declaration in your spirit. Don't allow discouragement 
to determine the outcome of your lives. Don't allow discouragement to prophesy over your life. Lift your head up. Lift your spirit up. Don't ask the question, can God? But make a declaration, declare that God can. Praise the name of God. God can. No matter how bad it looks, God can. No matter what man says, God can. Take a limit off of God. God wants to come through. He want to change your circumstances. He want to turn things around in your lives. He want to reverse the decision. The devil has already declared that it's coming to pass. But say in your heart, the devil is a lie. Say in your heart, he does not determine my destiny. He doesn't dictate my life. I'm not going to allow him to dictate my life because God can make me a victor. I don't have to surrender to the mercy of the enemy. I can lift up my head put a smile on my face. Lift my hands up in praise and declare God. God can. Take the limit off of him. Some of you have been going through some stuff. Listen to me, even here. Those of you that are around the rest of the world, those across the continental United States, because things are dark now, they're not all going to be dark always. A lot of days coming. Can somebody give him some praise? Can you praise him like that? Those of you down in the hills of Mexico, can you lift your hands up and give God praise? Because God, God is still able. Those of you that are listening, I'll go in India. Put a smile on your face. Stop crying and stop crying. Take the limit off of him. He's getting ready to work it out for him. Take the 
you're living off of He's about to fix it. Don't give up. You come too far to turn around. Don't give up. 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 Lift that cap off of him. Lift that limit off of him. He's able to do things in a farm above our imagination. Yes. Don't be like the Israelites were. After all, God had done for them. Yes. So he has had God trying to take them in the wilderness. So I'm saying to you, excuse the emotions, I purpose not to get emotional, because I wanted to make sure the words that I was delivering to you would be received by you, and that you might understand every word proceeding out of my mouth, that God might touch your hearts and your minds to recognize and understand what he's able to do and what he will do for you if you believe him. What he is able to do in your life if you have the need of turning your life around. And if it ever was a time, that time is now. This pandemic is simply a biblical prophecy that had to come to pass. One of many biblical prophecies, you know the rest, other pandemics and epidemics, sicknesses that have faced the nations over the last several decades. The Bible declared that it would come to pass right before the Lord comes. And things that are happening is just a sign of the coming of the Lord. And this is one in modern times that has become more imminent than any other that we have experienced at these modern times. But God is talking. God is talking. God is talking. Finally, man souls to him. This pandemic cannot stop God. Those who want God in the lives, they don't have to surrender. To the idea that when this COVID is over, I'm going to give my life to God. The souls are leaving here now. And leaving here without God in their lives. We don't know when this thing is going to be over. So my encouragement to you is not to put it off. But the Bible says now is a day of salvation. Thank God. Those of you out there, will you bow your heads back in prayer? Those of you are listening to my live stream. But when we saw it, I'm going to make a prayer call for the few of you that are here. Father, in the name of Jesus, turn to situations and circumstances around, around the globe. Make provisions, Lord, where the parish seems as if in the hearts and minds of numbers that provisions are not going to be made. Provide, Lord. Even some looking at you for healing How will this pandemic. Lift your hands upon them, O oh God. Cast 
the powers of demons and send him a praise. Bring salvation to those that are not filled with the Spirit. Those that have repented of their sins and accepted the word of baptism. I pray God that you will make it to pass and the lives. In Jesus' name, amen.